And U.S. President Barack Obama says he supports diplomatic efforts to end the conflict, but he's still considering whether to send weapons to Ukraine's army. Mr. Obama met Monday in Washington with German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who warned that arming Ukraine could cause Russia to escalate the conflict. For months, the Ukrainian president has been asking the U.S. to send weapons. So how is the government there reacting to President Obama's wait-and-see approach? I want to bring in Dmitrov Kalevar, the ambassador at large for Ukraine's foreign ministry. He joins me now from Kiev. Thanks so much for your time. Firstly, what do you make... Good evening, Linda. Firstly, what do you make of the fact that the U.S. is considering arming uh, the Ukrainians? Is, is there a big risk of inflaming the situation? We really appreciate the attention the uh, uh, U.S. administration is paying to the situation in Ukraine. The, the conflict is here on the ground, and uh, Russia keeps supplying terrorists with state-of-the-art weapons, tanks, artillery, radio jamming stations. Unfortunately, Ukrainian army has not been modernized for years, and we do need urgent support. We do need to strengthen our uh, critical defense capability. So uh, U.S. contribution to that will be deeply appreciated. So, so, obviously you want it. What do you make of the fact that uh, European nations, uh, European leaders, especially from obviously Germany and France, think that this will create a bigger problem on the ground? It's hard for me to imagine a bigger problem than the one we already have on the ground with all these inflows and heavy f of weapons and the heavy fighting taking place right here, right now. As it was mentioned earlier in your report, the peaceful city of Kramatorsk was shelled today by uh, Russian smirch uh, missile uh, rocket launchers. So everything provokes Russia. We should, try, we should have ability to defend our country, and we count on our partners to support us uh, in this endeavor. So going into the peace talks, what do you want out of it? What will you, you, the Ukraine government not negotiate on? Uh, we want ceasefire. Ceasefire is urgent. There is too much blood, too much sufferings. We need ceasefire that Russia and terrorists will support. Uh, our strategic goal, of course, is uh, to ensure territorial integrity of Ukraine. And this question will never be compromised. This will never come under discussion. We will not accept any attempt to change, to destroy territorial integrity of Ukraine. And the second thing is European choice of Ukrainians. We paid a high price for that. And we want to build a society built on, val uh, built on values and principles uh, on which the European Union is built. These things will never be discussed. These are the red lines we are not ready to cross. Uh, so what concessions are you willing to make to the anti-Kiev forces? Like, what are you willing to give up in order to, to get an agreement? We are in the middle of negotiation process, and I would prefer not to go into details on that. But trust me, Ukrainian government is ready to make comprom compromises but for the two issues that I've mentioned before. And so given that, obviously, Russia is a neighbor of yours, no matter how these talks fare and, and no matter how the outcome is, do you think you are going to have problems with Russia going forward long term? Well, unfortunately, the attitude towards Ukraine that is being uh, kind of uh, supported uh, and cherished in, the Russian, in, in Russia is uh, very destroying to damaging to our relations. But we do not want to consider Russia as an enemy. All we want is Russia to stop aggression against Ukraine and to pave the way for de-escalation. Well, we wish you all the best for the peace talks. Dimitro Kulabar, thank you so much for joining us.